Intel's Lunar Lake CPUs might just be in the exact right place at the exact right time because this chip seriously elevates what you can do on one of Samsung's latest laptops. We're reviewing the Galaxy Book 5 Pro 360, a 2-in-1 16-inch laptop that costs $1,700. Yeah, as you can see, this is this is a 16 inch. It's 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 quite it's quite big. I can barely. I'm looking at the preview and it's it's not even fully in frame. Oh, there we go. That's fully in frame. Uh, does not in include this. This is uh something we added. Now Samsung did not send this laptop to us. We actually bought it. We kind of needed a laptop anyways, uh, for my fiance's job, and I figured, well, why not get a review out of it? So here we are with this. Very, very expensive, but very premium, very nice laptop. So obviously my expectations for this laptop were quite high and I don't think Samsung just met them. I think they might have even exceeded them. Uh, let me get right into it. The Book 5 Pro 360 is something you might call an Ultrabook or a thin and light laptop. It's half an inch thick and weighs 3.7 pounds, which I would consider thin and light for something that has a 16 inch display. Personally, I'm more of a fan of laptops in that 13 to 14 inch range, but I didn't hate the Book 5 Pro 360's larger size. I mean, it does have a really big screen, which is nice, so that kind of offset my dislike for larger laptops. Speaking of that screen, it uses an AMOLED display with a 3K resolution, or 2880 by 1800 pixels to be precise. That's not quite as high as 4K, but on a 16 inch screen, I don't think you'd be able to really tell the difference between 3K and 4K. The Book 5 Pro 360 already has a pixel density of over 200 pixels per inch, which is pretty good and allows for some pretty fine detail. And things don't just look detailed on the Book 5 Pro 360's display, they look vibrant too, and that's because this display covers 120% of the DCI-P3 color space. The color coverage isn't just something for Samsung to rag about on the spec sheet. My fiance, who is by no means a display aficionado or a tech enthusiast, she has been watching TV shows and movies on the laptop since we got it, and she's gone out of her way to comment on how great it looks, and I agree with her, it looks really good. The last major selling point of this screen is that it's a touchscreen, and Samsung must really want you to use it because they include this stylus with it, and they also preload the laptop with a couple of drawing and sketching apps. Here I am coloring in this drawing of a dog that's included in the Samsung pen up app. I'm not really an artist as you might tell so I'm not really the target demographic for this sort of stuff like I can tell it's cool it's just not my thing however my fiance is an artist as well as a writer and she loves doodling on this laptop specifically using the good notes app which requires a subscription but Samsung gives you three months of it for free and yes she wrote all of this stuff on the book 5 pro 360 using the pen that's her natural handwriting GoodNotes has some cool features that makes this stuff easier. You can see here that the shapes I draw are refined using the shape tool, which is pretty cool. You can also select and drag stuff and move them, also pretty cool. It also has this handwriting to text thing, which unfortunately just didn't really work for me. That's probably just because I didn't really spend too much time with the RC stuff because it's just not my thing. But that's enough about the screen. Let's talk about the keyboard and the trackpad. I can't quite get the full uh, thing in frame without uh, completely blocking myself out, but you can see uh, this keyboard is nearly full size. You got your uh, your numpad over here and you know your normal stuff here. Uh, you're only missing like the page navigation keys like home and page out, page out, that kind of thing. Also this giant trackpad, absolutely huge. Uh, I actually reviewed the uh, Book 4 Pro 360 for hot hardware last year or no earlier this year. And uh, this that thing had a big trackpad. This is even bigger than that one. Uh, yeah, so gigantic. Personally, I've been using a mechanical keyboard with cherry red switches for like a decade, like literally the same exact keyboard. And my laptop, the Flow X13 is also more for gaming. So its keyboard is also more gaming optimized. So safe to say I'm more used to the, you know, a gaming oriented typing experience. Obviously, the Book 5 Pro 360's keyboard was a very different experience, but it was really good to type on. I didn't spend a ton of time day to day with this laptop and this keyboard, and I really didn't need to. It was just a great experience from the get-go. It's hard for me to say what exactly this keyboard does well. I didn't feel like I was getting amazing tactile feedback or anything like that. It was just a good typing experience. The touchpad was also good. It's kind of hard for it not to be when it's as large as it is. Wrapped around the display keyboard and trackpad is an aluminum chassis, which gives this laptop a really premium and sturdy feeling without it being too heavy. I will say, I wish there was a way to attach the pen to the laptop. As far as I could tell, there was no way to do this. So I ended up buying a holster to just stick on the laptop. You put the pen in there. It's a lot more convenient than carrying the pen around in your pocket or putting it in your laptop bag. Of course, what's on the inside is also super important. The Galaxy Book 5 Pro 360 uses one of Intel's latest Lunar Lake CPUs, the Core Ultra 7 256V, and this is a really unusual chip from Intel. Normally, a higher-end CPU tends to just improve things across the board. So like, you know, you get more cores, you get higher 
clock speeds, you get more cash, that kind of stuff. So when you have like a higher end CPU versus lower end CPU, the higher end CPU just tends to be the same as the lower end one, but just bigger and better in every way. Lunar Lake, however, is basically its own thing. It has eight cores in total. There are four P cores, the performance focused ones, and four E cores, the efficiency oriented ones. There's no higher end or lower end Lunar Lake model. It's just eight cores, take it or leave it. While Intel gave up lots of CPU prowess with Lunar Lake, in exchange it beefed up two other areas, graphics and AI. The ARC 140V integrated graphics might just take the crown from AMD's APUs, and the AI performance, at least on paper, is the best in the world among mobile chips. Power consumption and efficiency is another focus for Lunar Lake, another reason why this chip is on the small side. Lunar Lake is a uniquely lean Intel chip that's supposed to be fast where it matters and ignores areas that aren't so important for the thin and light experience. This is closer to Apple's MO with their base M-series uh, processors like the M1, M2, M3, M4. Anyways, this 256V CPU comes equipped with 32GB of DDR5 RAM, as all Lunar Lake chips are, and a 1TB SSD. Powering all this is a 76 watt hour battery, which isn't really that crazy for a 16 inch laptop, it's, it's fairly standard. Of course, we tested the Book 5 Pro 360 in a ton of benchmarks to get a sense of how it performs, not just with the CPU and the integrated graphics, but even like the storage and the battery. For comparison, we're testing my daily driver, the Flowex 13 2023 with the Ryzen 9 7940HS, as well as the Steam Deck LCD, which has a custom AMD APU. Uh, all of these devices were using the most up-to-date software as of late November, including Windows updates. Every device was configured as it was out of the box by default, and we used the balanced power plan for all of our charger and on-battery testing. Anyways, let's take a look at the results. First up, we have the Procyon AI Computer Vision Benchmark. This is basically an AI inference test. We would have liked to run this test on the MPU or neural processing unit that exists on the Book 5 Pro 360 and the X13, but Procyon for some reason doesn't support AMD MPUs. So instead, we just have performance results from the CPU and the GPU, and we're looking at the CPU results right now. The 256V is no match for the 7940HS here, which is unsurprising since the AMD chip has a big advantage on the CPU side of things. All eight of its cores are performance focus cores, and it also has multi-threading, which means two threads per core instead of just one, like on the 256V. But when we switch to the integrated graphics, the 256V's integrated 140V graphics manages to just barely beat the 7940HS and its 780Mi GPU. Performance is also just better on a GPU when it comes to AI stuff, which works in Intel's favor here. In Cinemesh 2024 multi-threaded, a CPU rendering benchmark, the 7940HS once again commands a significant lead over the 256V. This is for the same reasons that the 256V was slower in the AI computer vision test. But in the single-threaded benchmark, the 256V gets in the first place and by quite a big margin. Lunar Lake's performance optimized P cores are really, really fast. There's just not a ton of them. Hence, mediocre multi-threaded performance, but great single-threaded performance. Geekbench 6 is another CPU intensive test which runs lots of micro benchmarks to determine general performance. The gap in multi threaded performance between the 256V and the 7940HS is pretty small here compared to Cinebench 2024, which works in Intel's favor. The gap in single threaded performance is also down compared to Cinebench, but the 256V still leads. Coming back to Procyon, we have the Office Productivity Benchmark, which tests Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. The 256V and 7940HS are about neck and neck, and I'd call that a good result for the Intel chip considering how lean it is. We also tested in the somewhat older PC Mark 10 benchmark, which covers everything from productivity apps to video conferencing to web browsing. Again, we see similar performance from both the 256V and the 7940HS. Speedometer 3.0 is a web browser benchmark that we ran in Chrome, and here the 256V has a very good lead over the 7940HS. 3D Mark Steel Nomad Lite is a gaming benchmark, but since games are largely GPU bound, this is also a general GPU performance test too. The 7940HS had a noticeable but not massive lead over the 256V. TimeSpy is the gaming benchmark that preceded Steel Nomad, but is composed of a graphics portion as well as a CPU portion. The overall score factors in both the GPU and CPU performance, and here the 256 is well in the lead. However, the 256V's strength isn't coming from the CPU test, where it lost by a decent margin to the 7940HS. This is a multi-threaded CPU test, which the 256V struggles on. Unlike in Steel Nomad Lite, the 256V is way faster than the 7940HS. I'm not sure why there's such a large difference here. Maybe it has something to do with TimeSpy being older, or maybe because TimeSpy is more optimized for mid-range to high-end GPUs from 2016. Storage performance usually isn't a big concern for laptops, but we ran 3DMark storage benchmark 
rank anyways, and although it's more gaming focused, scores from this test are generally good at showing overall storage performance. Here, we see that the Book 5 Pro 360's SSD really isn't all that good, getting half the points of the X13's drive. And it's not like the X13 has a particularly great SSD, it's just an SM740M with 512GB of storage. The Book 5 Pro 360 isn't a gaming laptop, but since it does boast some powerful integrated graphics, we decided to run half a dozen games on it to see how it does. We tested all of these games at 1080p with the lowest settings possible. Starting off with Total War 3 Kingdoms, the 256V and its 140V iGPU are out ahead of the 7940HS and the integrated 780M GPU. The deck, which has been in last place basically the whole time, is still in last place but not by a big amount. Counter-Strike 2, however, was really bad for the 256V. It had a good average frame rate, but the 99th percentile was really bad, which means inconsistent frame pacing and lag. The deck almost had a better gaming experience since it at least had a better 99th percentile frame rate. The 256V was behind the 7940HS in Civilization, but not by much, and this time it had a good 99th percentile frame rate. In the turn timer benchmark, the 256V was just a touch faster at finishing turns than the 7940HS. Dota 2 is another good game for the 256V, which outperformed the 7940HS by a notable, but not huge margin. It was also about twice as fast as the deck. Hitman 3 unfortunately was a pretty bad title for the 256V, being slower than even the deck. The 7940HS meanwhile was basically at 60 frames per second, the standard for a smooth gaming experience. Last up for our gaming benchmarks, we have The Witcher 3, and man is the 256V fast. Its average frame rate is almost double that of the 7940HS, and although the 99th percentile wasn't too impressive, it was good enough for a laptop like this. We also looked at performance when on the battery, and in Cinebench 2024 multi-threaded, it's pretty much the same performance as we get on charger. Both the 256V and 7940HS lost some performance in the single-threaded test, which I believe is because Windows limits the clock speed of CPUs rather than the power level when running on the battery. This would impact the single-threaded results, which rely on high clock speeds, but leave multi-threaded performance untouched since high core usage naturally drags down frequency anyways. PCMark is fairly dependent on single-threaded performance, so naturally both laptops are slower on the battery than on the charger. However, the Flow X13 used to have a sizable lead in this test when we used the charger, but the Book 5 Pro 360 has a slight lead when on battery. Strangely enough, performance went up slightly on all of these devices when we switched to using the battery. This doesn't seem to make a ton of sense at first, but I believe that because CPU clock speeds are reduced when on battery, it frees up a little bit more power for the integrated GPU. That's just my guess though. These charts show power and thermal performance on these devices over time. First, we're looking at Cinebench 2024 multi-threaded, the showcase power behavior, and a CPU intensive workload. Both the 7940HS and DEC chip, which are AMD APUs, demonstrated pretty consistent power draw, while the 256V bumped around quite a bit. Additionally, the 7940HS had some pretty clearly defined short and long-term power limits. It peaked around 75 watts at first, then settled into a 53-ish watt TDP for about 3 minutes, and then slowly declined to 40 watts flat. By contrast, the 256V starts off roughly at 35 watts, and then saw its power draw decrease to 20 watts over about 5 minutes or so. However, the 7940HS clearly consumed lots more power here, and sure, it was the faster chip, but not by much. The 256V ended up being about 10% more efficient, which isn't amazing for a CPU that's got significantly better process technology, but it's something. Heat is a product of power, but dealing with heat is up to whatever cooler these devices have, so temperature is an interesting thing to look at to evaluate both the processor and the cooler. Both the 256V and 7940HS got to about the same temperature as the other, but that's only because the Flow X13 has a beefy cooler, since it's also used for models that have discrete graphics chips for gaming. This cooler is bigger and louder than the one on the Book 5 Pro 360, which was audible but not really annoying. Where the 256V really shines is in graphics efficiency. This chip consumed so little power in this benchmark that you could conceivably put it inside a Steam Deck, which uses an AMD APU that consumes about 3 or 4 watts less. The 7940HS though is using almost 3 times the amount of power for roughly the same performance, and this is a big deal for handheld PCs because the Flow X13 2023 is basically a laptop version of the ROG Ally. Now, I've never really been happy with handhelds like the ROG Ally because they're so power hungry, but Lunar Lake might solve that if it's given the chance. Unsurprisingly, the 256V did the best in thermal performance here thanks to the combination of low power draw and a decent cooler. The Flow X13 doesn't have low power draw, and the deck doesn't have a good cooler, hence them losing to the Book 5 Pro 360. The last thing we're covering here is battery life via Procyon's battery benchmarks. Up first, we have battery life at idle, which means we left these devices alone and only let normal background stuff run. Screen brightness was set to the minimum,
them, and keyboard backlights were disabled. The Book 5 Pro 360 lasted for 1,452 minutes, which converts into over 24 hours. The Flow X13 didn't do bad, especially considering the Book 5 Pro 360 has a battery that's 20% larger. However, the Book 5 Pro 360 lasted 40% longer, which indicates that the combination of hardware Samsung uses is pretty good for battery life. The 256V probably played a role in this win. This is another battery test, but this time when Word, Excel, and PowerPoint are actively being used. The Book 5 Pro 360 lasted 36% longer than the 7940HS, once again punching above its weight. And lastly, we have the video playback test, which just plays the video on repeat until the battery is drained. The Book 5 Pro 360 still has a commanding lead, but it's only 20% greater than the Flow X13, the slimmest margin of the three tests. So the 256V isn't some hulking behemoth of a CPU. It fell behind the 7940HS and the productivity benchmarks, as well as the multi-core tests. However, the 256V isn't meant to be that anyways. Its single core performance was much stronger, 26% better in Cinebench and 12% better in Geekbench. The integrated graphics on the 256V also impressed me. It it had a pretty commanding victory in Time Spy against the 7940HS's 780M graphics, uh, but it did fall behind a little bit in Steel Nomad, but not by too much. It, it was pretty close in that test. And while outright victory would have been best for Intel here, AMD has been the king of integrated graphics for quite a while, so even a slight loss is actually pretty good progress for Intel here. Actual games were a bit of a mixed bag for the Book 5 Pro 360, however, against the Flow X13, which admittedly is made for gaming, unlike the Book 5 Pro 360, the Samsung laptop only won about half the time. In Counter-Strike 2, the 256V just had really poor frame pacing, even if the average was pretty acceptable. And in Hitman 3, its performance was, it was just bad. It didn't even catch up to the Steam Deck LCD. However, I suspect the main issue here might be the graphics driver. I mean, just look at The Witcher 3. The 256V was achieving like double the frame rate that the 7940HS can muster. I even got the Book 5 Pro 360 to run the game on ultra settings at 1080p with FSR 2 upscaling. We're a little bit shy of 60 frames per second, but honestly, I would love to have this gaming experience on my X13, which barely runs The Witcher 3 at all. Clearly, Lunar Lake has potential, especially thanks to its low power consumption. Intel just needs to iron out issues with the graphics driver. If Intel ever fixes these issues in like Counter-Strike 2 and Hitman 3, the Book 5 Pro 360 might even be a good laptop to game on. Thermal performance and battery life were also excellent on the Book 5 Pro 360, and I'm sure that's at least partly thanks to the 256V. Now, there's one last area of performance I haven't really discussed, AI. My issue with approaching AI is that there's not really a ton of great AI benchmarks out there that specifically utilize the Neural Processing Unit, or MPU, which is one of the major sources of AI prowess from chips like Lunar Lake. Procon is probably the best AI testing program out there right now, but I couldn't really do an apples to apples comparison between the 256V and the 7940HS because Procon doesn't actually even support AMD MPUs, only Intel MPUs. Another problem is the lack of utility for on-device AI. Anything I can do on the Samsung laptop or my laptop or any laptop for that matter, it can be done on a website like chatgpt.com where I can just talk to chatgpt. Uh, there's no need for me to install some local app and get some local LLM running. In fact, a, a cloud-based solution like ChatGPT is probably going to run better. So yes, today Lunar Lake is the fastest AI CPU, at least on paper. I just don't really see that as a major selling point. If you're into AI though, I'm sure you'll find the Book 5 Pro 360 perfectly serviceable. It probably won't surprise you that I give this Samsung laptop a thumbs up. The Galaxy Book 5 Pro 360 is great for all the things that you would want a thin and light laptop to do. It's fast where it counts, it has tremendous battery life, the display looks great, it can even game. I could go on, but I won't because that list would get quite, quite long and we do not have time for that. $1,700 is a lot to ask for, but I think Samsung has earned it. For reference, I paid $1,000 for my Flow X13 back in March, and it was on a pretty good sale. If I had the option to pay like $700 more for the Book 5 Pro 360, I might have done that, and I probably definitely would have done it if there was like a 13 and 14 inch model. I, I love that stuff. Samsung, please make like a 13 or 14 inch model. Uh, that would be great. Thank you. If you liked our testing and analysis, please like the video, leave a comment, subscribe, and click the bell icon to get notified the next time we upload. If you really like what we do, you can support us through Patreon. A link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.